This is the Set Power Portable Electric Fridge. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a few things I want to mention. First, I want to thank Set Power for sending out the AJ50 Portable Electric Fridge. And in fact, it was Set Power who had reached out to me and made that offer. Now, the coincidence was Gina and I were considering purchasing an electric fridge this year for our annual camping trip. And, you know, we were just I guess you might say tired of relying on our old-fashioned cooler and ice setup, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. So the timing was great, and when I had done a little bit of reviewing on this, or a little bit of research into this unit, I found it does look like a really good unit. Now, we do have very limited use on it so far, so this is not going to be a full-on long-term review. Having said that, we did use it here for two weeks before I brought this video to you so that I can get some experience with it and come up with the questions and the comments and things that I wanted to know more about. We will be doing another video on you have after having used this for two weeks in Kujbaquak National Park this summer and then I should be able to give you a lot more about my experiences with it. Now there's just a few things I want to mention and the first is why would you even want to consider a refrigerator like this, an electric refrigerator? I mean what's wrong with just the traditional cooler and ice bags? Well I'll speak more to the cooler and ice in a minute. But first off, I want to talk about who should actually be thinking about buying one of these, or at least uh, looking at considering buying one of these. Well, to start with, people like ourselves. We are car campers. We go tenting in a national park every year for two weeks. We don't have an RV or a trailer, so we're going to be using a tent, and we always keep bring our food with us and kept it in a cooler. So this is ideally suited to someone in that position. But there is a larger number of people that may want to consider this. First, anybody with an RV or a trailer that doesn't have a built-in fridge, and a lot of them are old-school fridges, run off of propane and AC, but not necessarily off a of 12-volt DC like this one does. Maybe people who have yachts or boats, again, that don't have a fridge inside of it. Those who are just going road tripping and want to be able to keep their food either for, uh, cold or frozen, depending on what it is that they have, and maybe even those who are just going to outdoor events, whether it's a tailgate party, uh, uh, a patio party somewhere, they want to be able to keep everything cold while they're outdoors away from the house and where electricity might be available to them. So there's any number of people who could make use of a fridge like this. And I just want to put that out there so it might you might want to consider those reasons for purchasing this. Now, why an electric fridge and why not a cooler with ice? Well, that's what Gina and I had always used, was just a plain old cooler and ice. And it worked to a degree. There were some real downsides to it to start with. Ice got really expensive. Over the last couple of years, ice had at least doubled in price. So now we're paying a lot more for ice than we used to pay. And that's not a small thing when you consider you can easily go through a bag or block of ice a day. And if it's really hot out, to a day. So that was part of the reason was cost. Also the inconvenience of having to go get it. it. Every day we would have to drive to one of the stores that sold the ice and bring it back and put it in our cooler. And you know that was actually part of the issue. Sometimes we got there and they were out. If it was a really hot stretch of weather sometimes they ran out of ice then we're really in trouble because the food we were relying on to keep cold um, wasn't going to stay cold for much longer. So that was an occasional issue. It didn't happen a lot, but it was an occasional issue that we ran into. There are other inconveniences when you're using ice. One, if anybody has used ice, they know. First off, ice melts. No surprise there, but what it does is it creates a pool of water in the bottom of your fridge. Anything that's not sealed in a waterproof container inside of your, not your fridge, your cooler, anything that's not sealed in a waterproof container gets wet. And if it's things like, uh, I always hated it when the cheese got wet, got in through the, the Ziploc bags and got wet because the cheese would just go mucky and, and be ruined for sure. And it wasn't even uh, cooling throughout. Sometimes you got things really cold in the corner, some things that towards the top of the cooler didn't stay cold enough and went bad quicker. So we always had to organize our foodstuffs so that we knew about which things were going to spoil the fastest and make sure we consumed those before the other stuff. And of course there was the daily dumping of water out of the cooler. Now yes we do have a little side plug on it but you had to take it away from wherever it was. We usually kept it in our car just so animals didn't get in it. Take it to the picnic table, tip it up, dump the water out, take everything out, put everything back, 
get some new ice, put it in. It just got to be a real hassle. So that's the reason why we considered buying one of these electric fridges. Now, I'm going to point this up because this is one of the challenges we may face when we do get away camping this summer is we use one of the sites at Kujba Quack National Park that is not serviced with electricity. So I will be using one of the portable power stations to run this device. Now in transport, yes, I can use the 12 volt from my vehicle and that's what we'll be doing. But when we're parked and we're uh, you know, set up for the day, we're going to be using one of my batteries. I'll actually show you the battery that I tested this on. And just so you get an idea of what kind of results I got from it. So part of the issue is keeping the battery at peak charge or enough of a charge to run the fridge during the day and the night. So we've done some testing and I'll talk about that in a minute. But the next thing I'm going to have to do, of course, is bring a way to recharge the battery. I can't count on finding electrical outlet outlets at the park to recharge my battery. If I can, I'll use that because I will be counting on my solar panel to go with it. Now, the problem with the solar panel, not a problem so much, is the challenge we will have with the solar panel is the little site that we like to book tends to be nicely shaded in by trees. Now that lends to great privacy, but it doesn't lend to a lot of sun on our site. So the amount of sun that our solar panel will get each day is going to be somewhat limited as opposed to if we were camping in an open field and we had full sunlight all day. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge to see whether or not we can keep the battery charged well enough to run the fridge uh, and of course that doesn't even take into account rainy days or cloudy days. So that'll be part of the experience that I'll be able to report back to you. I'm not quite sure where this is going to go yet, but uh, you know, I guess at the very least it's still a cooler, but uh, we certainly want to run it as a refrigerator. Okay, so what I thought I would do, having said all of that, is just focus in on the, this refrigerator for a few moments. I'll give you some specifications on it, its key features, and the experiences we've had so far in the test we've done here at home. Okay, I will be bringing the camera in in a moment just so you can get some closer views of this and show you some of the details, especially the inside as well as the display panel. But I just wanted to bring the camera back a little bit so I can talk about its key features and you can get a, uh, an estimation of the size of this. So first off, let's just start with what came with the AJ50. So right off of the top, of course, there is an AC power brick, very much like you would have for one of the portable power stations. So you can run this is off of house current or any AC wall current. Uh, you may be at the park there. They do have sites that I could have booked for AC current. And at the same time, you also get a DC operation device as well for using with your uh, vehicle so that you can uh, you know run it off of that or if you have a trailer or an RV you have 12 volt then this will run off a 12 volt or in my case I'll be running it off of my Blue Ready AC70 portable power station that's the one I did the testing on I think it's about the right size for the needs I have but we'll talk to that in a moment so of course that's an important piece of information now because we will be uh, taking this in our vehicle, um, I'm going to be able, putting it either in the trunk or at least in the back seat. And I don't have AC outlets back there, so I did purchase off of Amazon a 12 foot extension cord for my AC, a high current uh, 12 volt extension cord. So that's something you may want to consider depending on if you have the need. And of course, there is a manual and warranty information on the back of it, how it operates. I'll also point out, because I did make good use of this, is that Set Power does have their own YouTube channel with some instructional videos. Uh, that came in especially handy when it came to the calibration, which I'll speak to in a moment. All right, so those are the things that came. Oh, there is one more thing that Set Power did send. This is an option, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's something I appreciate having. This is an insulated cooler bag, a two-piece bag that will be fitted around the cooler itself. It does zipper shut on top, but of course you can unzipper it to get access to the cooler itself. Uh, so this is an option, but I'll tell you, this is something that has a lot of value. It's very thick. It's got to be close to be a, a half inch thick in what feels like a high density foam in the insulation, well over a quarter inch. Anyway, the reason I say that is Gina and I, from our experience in using the coolers and ice, found that we can get a longer period of time with the ice if we 
put blankets over top of the cooler. If we actually insulated the cooler with additional blankets or whatever we had, or pieces of foam, anything we could, we could get a little bit more lifespan out of the ice, but it was also more inconvenient because you had to have those things with you to put over this. So we sometimes we would get up in the day and take our sleeping pegs and put on top of this so it would keep things cold during the day. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's nice to have that uh, insulated cover to put over top of the device itself. All right, let's go through a few of the specifications. Now, this is the AJ50 model. And I should point out that when Set Power did reach out to me, uh, they have, I think, four or five different series of electric fridges that you can choose different models from within. And uh, this is the one they, they offered me, if, is from this line, the AJ line. And we, I think there was four or three different sizes in the AJ line. And Gene and I did a lot of debating what's the right size for us. Because, of course, you don't want to get one too small and find out you didn't get one with enough room. You also don't necessarily want to get one that's too big that doesn't fit in your vehicle or has extra excess capacity that you can, can't necessarily use. It's not so much about energy consumption because there wouldn't be a lot of difference there. But, you know, we just wanted to size it right. Well, it turned out after having measured our old cooler that we decided to go with the AJ50, which is the larger of three, four. Uh, yeah, well, if you go to the website, you'll see there's different sizes. We went with the AJ50, which is a 53 quart or 50 liter capacity. And I, I know, what does that mean? Well, uh, they do, they have some nice diagrams about just about how much, like to give you examples of cans of pop or beer or whatever it is you want to put in it, just to give you some volume size. I will tell you, this is what Gene and I would need in volume for two weeks of car camping. And that is with a refresh of things that we might have to go to a store to get. But for the most part, this will take care of just about everything we could use for two weeks of car camping that has to go in a cooler. That is not all our Food. All right, so that's the reason why we went with this model. Now, the weight, it does have a bit of weight, and that is one of the things that you have to take into consideration is, of course, the compressor, which is down on this corner, does add to the weight of the unit. So it comes in at 33.1 pounds or 15 kilograms. Um, it's not a big deal. I mean, the cooler full of ice added up to quite a bit of weight. So that's something to consider if you have to lug this thing around, just what it's going to weigh on you. Uh, now the dimensions. In this dimension, 23 inches. In width, it is 13.8 inches. And from tabletop to the top here is 20.9 inches. Now that's, that's important to know, but more important is consider where you're gonna be putting this. If it's in your vehicle, in your tent, in your trailer, wherever it is, how is this going to fit in? Now, this has got easy, easy access. I'll show you in a, in a minute. But at the same time, Jen and I thought, we usually kept our coolers on the back seat. Again, we kept them inside of the vehicle overnight because we've had, had experience with uh, raccoons, bears, and skunks getting into our food before we uh, got caught on to put it away somewhere. And so that was also important. Now. The reason I mentioned that for this cooler is this is an end opening one. So you can see it's going to have quite a bit of height. So if you put this in the back seat of your vehicle, are you going to be able to raise the lid all the way up? And it has uh, some, a little cord here to keep it from overextending and then be able to reach down inside. So uh, we weren't quite sure it was going to work for us like that. So we're going to change the position of storage and it's going to go in the trunk. We have a hatchback. It's going to go into the trunk so we can get easy access to it there. So that's just something to consider. I do also want to point out, as I mentioned, this is end opening, but they have other series at set power that have the front opening, even two two side op or two front openings. So it depends on what you're looking for. I'd recommend you take a look at all of the different models so you can go over the pros and cons for what it is that you feel you need. So uh, yeah, now. I'm going to give you the wattage consumption on this as it is stated in the manual, and then I'll talk about my experience. So it does say that it will consume between 30 and 45 watts of power when it is running. And that's important because this only runs long enough that it, to keep the cool to whatever temperature it is you set. And then it 
turns off. So it's not like I've seen the uh, the Coolatron, I think, is a brand. Uh, my parents-in-law had one. It ran all the time. So if you try to run that off a battery, you'd kill it within a few hours. If you're running it off a 12-volt DC in your vehicle, as long as the vehicle's running, it's, gone, it's a good feature or it will work. But no, this actually will only consume between 30 and 45. Uh, in testing, it ran at 40 watts off of my battery. I'll speak to the testing again in a minute. Now, it has a range of cooling and I found this quite impressive, from zero degrees or from 50 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to zero degrees Fahrenheit or in Celsius, like here in Canada, 10 degrees Celsius all the way down to minus 18. Now, we didn't try to get it all the way down to minus 18. And I, I question whether or not that's capable of going all the way down like that. Honestly, I don't even see the need to go all the way down that consumes a lot more power, but that's what they say this is capable of doing. All right, some of the key features for this unit is the fact that it is uh, very fast cooling. Now, I saw some debate of that in the different reviews on just how fast it is, and yes, I expect the more expensive ones probably do cool things faster, but they're saying this will bring you down to 30 degrees, 32 degrees Celsius in 15 minutes. Okay, I, I don't question that, but I don't know how relevant that is because, to be quite honest, we will be either putting frozen food in this before we take it away with us or we'll have everything in here and frozen with the unit in the house, turn on house current, before we transport it out to our car. So, you know, how quickly it cools down. Now, if you're starting from fresh out in the field and it's just whatever the, the ambient temperature, the air is, and you're trying to get it down to temperature as quickly as possible, then it makes a bit of a difference, but you, you can develop strategies, strategies for working around that. Power consumption is rated at one kilowatt hour per hour per day, and um, that, that's an irrelevant term to me. I'm not highly technical. I, I, don't have, I can't do the mathematics to say, well, what does that mean in terms of how long would it last? I'll give you my experience with my battery, and then you can judge it from there. One of the nice things it has, of course, is that it has battery protection. So it actually has three levels of battery protection. You can set them to yourself. And so if you're using this with your vehicle and you park the vehicle and it's running off of the car battery, you certainly don't want this to drain you down to a point where it drains the battery and now the car won't start. So the cooler knows when to shut off. It, it can tell how much power is left in your car vehicle and will shut off before it gets to that point. And again, there's three settings. So it depends on just how much risk you want to take with it. And that will also work with the power station. So your power station won't go all the way down to zero. Uh, it, depending again where you want to set it. That's a good feature to have in this as well. Now, this is advertised as having two zones. Now, I'm actually going to give you a look inside so you can understand what I mean by this, but they advertise it as having two zones. I made an assumption that turned out to be false. Having looked at some fridge and doing a bit of research before I was offered this one, I had assumed that two zones meant two separate zones that I could set the temperatures for. So in other words, I could have it at a minus temperature in one area and just above zero as a cooler in another zero area. That's not the case. It does have two zones, but there's only one of them is settable with the display, the primary zone. So the most of this freezer, as you'll see, or this fridge, when I open it up, can be set for a temperature, but there is another compartment that rides just above the compressor that will maintain a temperature differential of 10 degrees. So if you set this for minus 10 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius or whatever you set it for, this is going to be 10 degrees warmer on this end. So it is dual zone, but it is not separate in terms of you can't set each one. Now they do have models that you can do that with. This just isn't one. So I just want to make clear so people don't get misled to think that it's what I had assumed dual zone means. So I think that's kind of important as well. It's got a few other features I'll show you. It has a built-in light. Wow, you don't even know you need it until you uh, find, realize that you can have it because if we went out in the evening to the cooler, we always had to take a flashlight with us so we can see what was inside. So this has a built-in light, which is kind of nice. 
large basket. Because of the depth of this, this has a, a wire basket that you can lift out, which means that you can uh, take things out of the basket. And, and it, it also helps to give a little bit, a tiny bit of gap between the side walls and the floor of the, of the fridge itself so air can circulate and do a better job of keeping everything um, down to the proper temperature. Here's a unique feature I never even really considered, but when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. This has a 40 degree anti-shake design. I said, well, what does that mean? Well, you know, if you take this out and put it in your car and you're driving on the road, it may not make a lot of difference. But if you're off-road and you're going up and down and moving over things, then it's good to know that it's that imp is not going to impact how the, the re um, compressor motor works and circulates. Because, of course, anyone who uses a home refrigerator knows that in order for it to be effective, it once you move it into position, you're supposed to leave it there for a period of time before you plug it in and start it running because the coolant has to level off, I guess, is the best way to describe it. So this will take quite a bit of changing in position and still operate uh, the way it's supposed to. That's cool. Last thing, and then I'll bring the camera in, is this does come with a three-year warranty on the compressor and a one-year warranty on all the other refrigerator parts. All right, now I'll bring the camera in so you can see inside, and we'll talk about how the display operates only briefly because you can... It's, it's really simple. The manual does a good job, and if you can't pick it up from the manual, which I was, I was a little bit challenged with in times, the website, or not the website, the YouTube channel for Set Power does a good job of it as well. All right, let me reposition the camera. All right, so I just plugged the unit in. It hasn't been plugged in for some time now, and I'm not going to go through setting the displays and the temperatures and everything else because uh, that's something that's so well detailed in the manual. You really don't need me to go over that right now. But here's something I want you to notice or see if you can hear at least, and that is the compressor is running and I can barely hear it. So let me just stop talking and I'll move the microphone down to right beside the compressor and we'll see whether or not it's picking up for you. So I'm not sure how that came across on the video, but I'll tell you that um, it's very, very quiet. I, this would not wake me up if I was sleeping inside of a camper and this turned on and started running. It's not very noisy at all. I'll tell you, my home fridge is much more noisy than this is. And that was my experience with it, is that I could barely tell when it was running when we did the testing. All right, while the fridge is running, let me just open up. So first thing I want to point out is there's a locking lid handle right here which snaps down and keeps it locked so it's not going to be automatic um, um, easily propped up um, having my experience with the animals such as the raccoons this is I wouldn't say it's animal proof or child proof even but uh, you know it's not going to come up unintentionally but they're clever enough they can probably get this open because I've seen it, them do it so opening up inside you can see there's a small LED fridge light in here and that does make a difference you can really see down inside and you can see what's in there if you're looking now hopefully you can see this these are the two compartments by the way this is the removable basket you can see how deep it is and it has a center partition that you can uh, remove if you want if you just want to have one large open basket you can use it that way of course it's not adjustable side to side it's just either two smaller baskets or one larger basket inside. This is the compartment I mentioned, the smaller of the two. It's about one third of the width in this dimension, but it's not all the way to the bottom of the fridge either because, of course, that's where the compressor rides. But it's this smaller compartment that has the higher temperature. In other words, whatever this is set to, this will be 10 degrees warmer. So what we found in our testing is we were able to keep things frozen in the main compartment, and then we put things in like spinach and lettuce in there. Just It's a good way to test because those things will go bad quickly. They'll show you whether or not you've kept down the temperature, and it did a good job. It kept them at uh, without spoiling, so I think that worked out very well inside. So not a lot more to see. You can see here's the retention strap that keeps it uh, the fridge from closing or flopping all the way back and uh, yeah so that's about all I can show you there uh, what else can I show you before we talk about my experiences with it by the way when you receive this unit you have to put the handles on 
All right, no big deal there, right? Just the right screwdriver and away. Actually, they provided a little wrench to go with it. Uh, other end of this, I'll have to flip it around. Let's see if I can do this. So there's where the plug is. So this is the uh, 12 volt DC or 12 to 24 volt DC plugs. So you can accept up to 24 volts with this. And there's the adapter, which is plugged into my wall power right now. So that's about everything I can show you. What I want to do now is talk about my experiences in my preliminary testing I've done here at home. All right, so I've repositioned the camera and I brought in my Bluetti AC70 portable power station. And now it's sitting on top of the fridge so that you can see it. Cause I want you to be able to see the power draw as it's running right now. So the compressor is running and I just looked at it. I can't quite see it from this side, but I noted that it was running at 39 watts. So that's significant, of course, because you want to be able to calculate the size of the battery you're going to need for the period of time it will be in operation between the times you get to charge it, if you understand what I'm saying. So I figured this is the best combination that I can get because I may or may not get to recharge this battery up to 100% every day and and it may take a day or two before I can recharge it fully. So I want to know it's going to last quite a bit of time. So this is a 768 watt hour battery. And so that's what I did my calculations on. Now, the truth is you get 768 watt hours rating for any power station, but you don't get the full amount of that. There's always significant losses in, in the power delivery. So even if you calculate a battery like this at 650 watts, then you can do some math about how long it should last for you. Now, here's the thing, the testing that I did with it. It was sitting in my home at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, so what's that, 21, 22 degrees Celsius, somewhere around that. And I let this run, plugged it in and let it run, and it took 48 hours for the fridge to deplete the battery. It wasn't quite depleted, of course, because the battery shut off, shut down the fridge before it went right down to zero. So 48 hours, I was actually very impressed with that. So if you have a means of recharging your battery on a regular basis, you can get away with a smaller battery. So if I can get 48 hours out of this, I thought that was pretty good. Again, the reason I am going with this larger battery is because I'm not sure I'm going to get enough solar in the site that we chose at the park to be able to recharge this every day. And I'm not sure I'll have access to AC power to recharge this every day. I won't need a lot because this is a very fast charging battery, but it does help you give a real life example of what it might do for you. Now, the other thing is 65 degrees Fahrenheit is not really hot in the middle of summer. So it could be that this will not last anywhere near the 48 uh, hours that I got out of it if the temperature, the ambient air temperature rises much above that. So uh, that's just something else for us to calculate. So I've got a bit of testing before I can trust that this will actually work for me for two weeks in, under those circumstances. So I just wanted to be able to point that out. Now there's another thing that, uh, that came out of our experience in testing and that is I wanted to confirm that the temperature that's displayed here is actually the temperature inside the fridge itself. So I actually used two devices and kind of cooperated with each other or, you know, how should I say, one supported the other or not. Here's an old school fridge, what mercury operated fridge thermometer that uh, is in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. So we put that inside to see if the temperature inside was comparable. And then something, not a high end one, but certainly one that worked for us. And this has the uh, remote uh, probe that you can drop down inside. And then I just set this little one on top. Worth having uh, at least until you're experienced in using this. And what I found is when this got down to temperature, we put a bunch of food in it. And when it got down to temperature, which didn't take very long at all, of course, and I checked, there was an eight degree Celsius difference, differential between what the display was set at and what I was getting for readings on those two thermometers. And I was a little disappointed by that. So I went to the Set Power website, looked through their literature, went to their 
a list of helpful videos on their YouTube channel and found there is a calibration pr uh, process that you can use to bring the temperature much closer. Not 100%, but here's what I got. I got down to two degree differential. Okay, I was prepared to live with that. I just had to know that on average the temperature was two degrees warmer inside than it was showing me on my display. Now there is a risk that of course that is my, my thermometer itself was not be inaccurate, but that, that's a separate issue. So yeah, if you're going to test it, make sure you've got an accurate thermometer, I guess. But the point was is that having done that, if I had not done that, that could make the difference between food inside remaining frozen or not. So it's a good idea to confirm what the operating temperature inside is in comparison to what the display is. So I will be taking that with me during the summer and that way I'll be able to know that what the temperature inside is. So that's that, I think that was a, a good uh, how should I say, test on my part, and I would recommend you doing the same. Yeah, okay, so those are my experiences with this so far. It is certainly lived up to the expectations and that I had for it, uh, with the one thing being that it ran a little warmer than I would have liked, but once you know that, then you can compensate for that by either turning the temperature down, well, turning the temperature down, presumably, you don't want it to run too warm. There's little chance of it running too cold, but yeah, all right, so that's everything I have. I think it's time now we can wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments on the set power AJ50 portable electric refrigerator. So as I've mentioned, I'm actually quite happy with the results of my preliminary testing. And that's important to understand is that once again, this is not a long-term review. I've had it for about a month, but I will be using it for two weeks of car camping. And I think that'll end up being a good test for it. And uh, then I'll be able to come back and give you a more in-depth review in terms of my experiences using it. So as I mentioned, the challenges that I see myself facing when we go car camping, with this unit is not having access to AC power in our campsite. If you have, then you're golden. You don't have to worry about this at all. Whether or not the battery that I choose or the power station I choose will last long enough between opportunities to recharge it. And my hope is that with the solar panel, and yes, these are extra things you do have to carry and pack and they have weight and everything else. I probably, I'd, well, I would be taking a power station with me regardless, but it's just a matter of, do I really need one this big? I think I do for this fridge, but that remains to be seen. Now, between now and when we do go car camping, I am going to continue to do testing on this because there's a number of questions I have about it, such as, can I set up a, 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 a situation in my yard here at home where I have limited sunlight and how will it run? As the temperatures get warmer here, I want to be, know that I can rely on that battery, that power station, to power this thing through some warmer temperatures before I take it away, car camping for two weeks and find out it's not going to work. Okay, so that's all I can share with you at this point, but I will be giving you an update in the future. But all the information I've given you now in terms of the links to where you can take another look at this unit or all the other units set power has for offer as well as the specifications that'll all be in the video description if you have any comments or questions or any suggestions for tests that i can put this through while i'm away put those in the comments section all right get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference bye for now